Shea Pepper from No Home Just Drown, and this is Ruffles. Today we're going to be making instant pot wine. Uh, so just to put out there, if you are under the age of 21, this is not an activity for you. And I don't have any children, so I have this little pupper here. Oh, thank you. Yes, dog mom for sure. And uh, honestly, not only do you not want to be under 21, you also do not want to be a dog and have anything to do with this because grapes are no good for dogs, aren't they? No, no, they're not. So now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So again, my name is Shay Pepper, and I'm with NoHomeJustRoam.com. NoHomeJustRoam.com is the website that my husband and I created uh, to track our journey. So we are on a five-year, 50-state road trip. We left on January 1st, 2018, and we are trying to see about 10 states a year. We've just arrived in our third state, Alabama. Uh, the Holderness family did this with Nailed It, and the, the website that I'm going to be using um, is um, foodandservice.com, and this article that they put up is from February like 18th or 13th or something, 2018. So it's pretty fresh. It's now March 11th here. Um, so it just came through my Facebook, and I wanted the opportunity to share it with you. Also, I love wine. So. So I think you need a little bit more background about me before you truly understand what uh, I am attempting to undertake here today. So first of all, let's start with this. Um, I am not a domestic goddess. So one of the things that I was most excited about when we were going on this adventure, because we don't have an RV or anything, we're in our car, so we're staying in hotels and Airbnbs. Uh, one of the biggest exciting parts for me is that I don't really have to clean for at least five years. Uh, uh, that is how exciting it is. Stephen, my husband, has pretty much done all of our cooking. He does um, our grocery shopping, um, which really is probably more to do with cost-saving measures than anything else. Um, I am well known for going to the grocery store to get eggs and buying $50 of things and then not actually buying any eggs. So uh, realistically, it is better if I stay out of the kitchen, out of the grocery store, and, and generally don't have anything to do with that. Uh, so Stephen had this great idea that he would um, create this kitchen, this portable kitchen that we would bring with us on our road trip. And included in it was an Instant Pot. So this apparently is an Instant Pot. Um, I really probably touched our Instant Pot for the first time, getting it out to put it here on the table. Um, I don't really know much about it. I'm hoping that it's as straightforward to run as it appears to be. Um, I know the setting I'm supposed to have from the website. And so, yeah, um, this is the Instant Pot, and I'm going to make wine with it. So that will probably be my cooking adventure for five years. So we're doing this video for posterity because it'll probably be the first and only time that you will ever see me touching our Instant Pot. And... Um, if there's one thing I hate worse than doing cooking, it is doing dishes. So I will tell you that already the first step that is involved in making Instant Pot wine tears me, terrifies me to my very core, and that is to sanitize your Instant Pot. Now they're talking about the Instant Pot liner pot. So again, not being very familiar, I kind of think that it's this. So there's like this inside pot that goes inside your Instant Pot. So I am going to take this over and wash it uh, very quickly and sanitize it. Part of the reason I think that this seems like a good idea is that when the Holderness family did this on Nailed It, they said their wine kind of also tasted like chili, so that maybe they needed to clean their Instant Pot out a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a sanitize as per the foodandservice.com website, and then we will really get started. We're going hand -held. And I've got my pot. We're heading here into the kitchen. Now, this is an Airbnb, so this isn't actually our property. Um, so I don't really know where anything is. So I'm going to put some hot water in here. And so you can see, again, see how I hate doing dishes? Okay. And there's that. All right. So while that fills up with some hot water, I'm going to have a look under the sink and see if I can find... They recommend cleaning it with bleach. I'm going to see if I can find any bleach. Let's see here. Um, they do not have bleach. Uh, what they have is, uh, Tylex Mold and Mildew and, um, CLR Bath and Kitchen and Comet. Um, you know, oh, they do have, they do have some all-purpose cleaning vinegar. 
I think I might go with all-purpose cleaning vinegar just to go with that. I know that it's probably not the disinfecting properties that you're really looking for, um, but honestly, I'm not going to put Tylex in our Instant Pot. That's just not going to happen. Even me, the house dummy, knows that you don't put Tylex in your Instant okay, Pot. Okay, I'm back. Um, so the list of ingredients that you need for Instant Pot wine include a 64 ounce of Welch's grape juice. Okay, so we have that. Um, and by the way, this is not sponsored by Welch's or by the Pure Granulated Sugar Company or Instant Pot or anything else. It's purely sponsored by my desire to try this recipe and see if Instant Pot wine is actually any good. So we've got our 64 ounce grape juice. We need one cup of granulated sugar. I've got my measuring cups here. Uh, it says you need a funnel. Now, here's where things start to get a little bit tricky for us here at No Home Just Roam. Everything that we think we're going to need for five years is in our Toyota Corolla. So I don't have a funnel. Well, technically I have two funnels. I have one funnel for oil for the car. Again, probably not good for using for wine. And while they are still unused, I also have feminine urination funnels, also known as the Shiwi, um, to attempt while we are hiking. So even though they're unused at this current stage, uh, I really didn't feel comfortable using a Shiwi to make this. I know that it probably would have upped the comedy value of this video tenfold at least. Uh, but I think that there are just some lines you have to have, and I think no female urination funnels in your winemaking is one of them. Uh, so what I've got here is one of our flexible um, cutting boards. I think this is a cutting board. I think this is what Stephen uses it for. Uh, and so we are going to kind of make a funnel shape when I actually need a funnel. Now, personally, I think this is fairly ingenious. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy a fancy funnel if you have a foldable uh, cutting board or a piece of paper or anything else. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? Uh, it says we need a pack of Lauvin red ye wine yeast. They also have white wine yeast and just half a pack. Now, here we go. Um, wine brewers everywhere are about to gasp in horror. <gasps> I don't have red wine yeast. I looked for it. I tried to find it at all local supermarkets. Um, so I did some research and I found out online that it's kind of, um, I think, depending on how seriously you take your home brewing wine, which I think, considering the fact that I'm using Welch's grape juice and an instant pot, I'm not currently at any sort of level of snobbery about homemade wine, um, is that you should use the, the wine yeast. But uh, I found another website, uh, leaf.tv, and they actually tell you how to activate your bread yeast for your wine making. So, no uh, contentious point for all of our home winemakers, but uh, I also saw that several people said they use their baking yeast just fine in their home wine making and that they really like the flavor that it gives it. So, I mean, honestly, if you're looking at a wine that's going to be made with grape juice and possibly eau de chili, I'm not sure that it's too specific on what kind of yeast that you need as a very serious issue for your bouquet. Uh, you need an instant pot with a yogurt function. Um, we do have that. There is the yogurt function. And you need clear packing tape. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here are the directions to make instant pot wine according to foodandservice.com. So you need to open your bottle of juice and remove one cup of juice from it and set it to the side. So I've got my measuring cup and I've got my juice. I'm going to take out one cup of juice and set it to the side. Now, there. So now we've got some space in our grape juice. Using your funnel, add one cup of sugar to your bottle of juice. juice. So if, if it's going to be wine eventually, I say we just make it super fancy and do that now. So we're gonna store it here in this side cup. Okay, and now I've got this free for a cup of sugar. Okay. Sugar. Ah, sugar everywhere. All right, so one cup of sugar. Oh, sugar. If there's one thing I can get on board with, it's adding a cup of sugar to just about everything. So then I'm going to make my funnel, okay, I know, it's pretty good, but again, I think if you're bootlegging your wine with the Instant Pot, then I think your funnel doesn't matter. 
All right, so pour the sugar into your bottle of juice. Wow, there it goes. Okay. Perfect. All right, so now my sugar is in here. I need to put the lid on, place the plastic cap on somewhat tightly and shake vigorously to help dissolve most of the sugar. This will take one to two minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake, 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 shake my grape juice. And I'm not gonna make you watch a minute of me shaking, even though I know that some of you might like to. Okay, so I have shaken up our juice. Uh, for about two minutes and the sugar should be pretty well dissolved in there. I'm going to give it another shake in a couple of minutes because um, here is the step where we need to add our yeast. So I'm actually going to switch over to a different website now. So back over to leaf.tv about how to activate your bread yeast for winemaking. So what I'm supposed to do now is heat up a cup of water per gallon of wine. And so we're actually, it's 64 ounces, which is half a gallon. Um, so we actually only need half a cup of water. So we're gonna go handheld again back to the kitchen and I'm gonna use our little uh, portable teapot that we have to heat up that water and to do our yeast steps. So here we go. So here is our little pot and we're gonna turn it on and it's gonna heat. So that's gonna heat up uh, the water to boiling. Uh, but right now uh, we're just going to sit and wait for the water to boil. That's really super exciting. Um, let's see here, what can I tell you? Um, we're going to be spending four more weeks or so here in Alabama. Next we're heading to Enterprise. Enterprise has the world's smallest St. Patrick's Day Parade. So it is one lady who dresses us up and go up and down the street. Um, and this is the 25th anniversary, so we're very excited. We also were able to secure a leprechaun outfit from Ireland for truffles. So she will be wearing a leprechaun outfit, which we think is pretty amazing. And by we, I mean me and Steven and every person we know. Uh, truffles less enthused about it, but she's usually a pretty good sport about those things. If she's not a good sport, eh, we take it off and no big deal. Uh, so we're still waiting for our water to boil. Hmm. Let's see here. What else should you know about me? Oh. I have a very questionable relationship with electronics. It is a well-known fact in our household that typically I touch things that are of an electronic nature and they die. I have been through several Kindles. I have been through a couple of computers. I have definitely killed a few hard drives. And so it is under very big duress that Steven is allowing me to use his Instant Pot and his kettle today. Um, because of my notoriety, shall we say, uh, with the electronic devices. Um, so yes, I think that that's pertinent to our situation here. So as you can see, uh, going forward with me actually trying to work the Instant Pot, that's going to be something pretty special, I tell you what. Uh, so our water is boiling. I'm going to go ahead and put you on hold until it's boiled, and then I'll come back. Okay, we're back. Um, the water is just about boiled now. Okay, so I'm back at our work area. I've got our hot water. Um, I've also got our tablespoon measurement and our half a teaspoon measurement, our sugar and our yeast. So uh, what you do, you put two tablespoons of sugar per gallon of wine into water. So we only have half a gallon of wine, so we only put in one tablespoon. Um, something else you will find out about me, I'm terrible at math. So I hope that that conversion is correct. Steven is currently asleep. Um, so I guess we will uh, find out if that is correct or not. Um, let's see. All right, so we we'll get one tablespoon of the sugar. And so I've got our uh, half a teaspoon of yeast. I'm gonna put that in the water with the sugar, and then just then stir until there are no dry clumps floating in the liquid. So I'm stirring. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, um, you've been pretty harsh on yourself. You aren't very good at cooking or cleaning. You are not very good with electronics. Um, you're not very good at math. Uh, so please know that I, I do actually have um, pretty decent self-esteem. Uh, I like myself the way that I am. Uh, just the way that I am does not involve anything having to do with cooking, cleaning, math, or electronics. Um, mostly what I enjoy is reading. 
I like to sing. Uh, I'm a part of the Hogwarts Running Club because I am a huge Harry Potter nerd, including my tattoo of the three stars behind my ear. Uh, that's from the corner of the books. And I love truffles and Steven and travel and young people working with them. Uh, I was a youth worker for a number of years and then a teacher most recently teaching middle school science. Um, so yeah, I have interests, just none of them have to do with this activity except for the outcome of wine. So yeah. Uh, all right, so I've stirred it. There's no more dry lumps in here floating on top of the liquid. And the next step is then to allow the yeast mixture to sit for 10 minutes or and five to 10 minutes or until foamy. If the mixture does not foam after 10 minutes, dump it out and start over with step one. If you continue to have problems, your yeast may be expired. Well, I hope my yeast isn't expired because I literally just bought it yesterday. Um, stay alive, little yeast. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside. You don't have to listen to me ramble for 10 oh, minutes. Hey, so we're back. The timer beeped and I have yeast. I don't know. It's sort of foamy. There's some foamy bits on top, so I, I think my yeast is okay. Um, I took a picture, which I will insert into this video so that you can also see it. I mean, this is not like a bubble bath foamy, but I see some foam, so I think that it's worth it. Yeah. So um, my wine recipe says to add it to our grape juice mixture. So I'm going to give it one more quick shake because of all that sugar we had in it that we kind of dissolved earlier. Um, so now we're going to add the yeast in, and then I'm going to use this and kind of make it like a funnel, and then pour that in here. <laughs> okay. And all of our yeasts out. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we've now put the yeast in there. Once you pour that in and then shake it up in the inside of the bottle. Okay, so I poured my yeast in and I need to shake it up a bit inside my bottle. Once you're done, pour the juice from the bottle into your instant pot. Remember the cup of juice we put to the side, you're gonna pour that in with the rest. Okay, here we go. Ooh, smells yeasty. Okay, and everything in. Wonderful. Now, just to be sure here, we don't want to throw this bottle away, by the way. This is going to become your beautiful bottle for decanting your wine later. Great juice. Okay. Ooh, that's good. All right, so I'm going to pour that back in as well. Close and lock the lid of your Instant Pot. Ooh, that could be tricky. Um, I know, you're thinking to yourself, how is that tricky? I've never closed the lid to the Instant Pot and locked it before. Ooh, doing things. Okay, so it's on and locked. I will say when I put the lid on, it did smell like chili, so hopefully our wine does not taste like chili. Um, let's see here. So close and lock this. Press the yogurt button and then press less. So important. When you use less heat on your yogurt function, do not close the vent on your lid. We need it open so the wine can breathe. So I'm trying, okay, so venting is open. Um, yeah, I think that's open. Yeah, if I seal it, I press it down, I think. So I think if it's up, it's open. All right, so yeah, so I press the yogurt function. Yogurt. And then I press less. I don't, I don't know how much, wait, I don't know. This is time. Wait. I'm So I went into Google and it sort of started to help me and then I kind of figured out what I probably needed to do anyway by reading. Basically, uh, I know, and those of you who are instant pot professionals, you were like, this is the most asinine thing I have ever seen that she can't figure this out, but I have. So press the yogurt function as per the... Yeah, I'm, it's just gonna have to be on normal, I guess. I don't, I don't know what they want me to do. Um, I mean, the yogurt function seems to have its own settings, so I don't seem to be able to adjust the yogurt function for the setting. Um, so I'm going to put it on yogurt. I'm going to put it on 48 hours. I'm going to keep the thing open like I'm supposed to and hope that this is good enough. Um, so it is starting, I think, or exploding. I'm not sure which. 
Now it's on zero. Hubs, should it be on zero or should it be counting down from 48 hours? Um, I think the yoga counts up. It counts up to 48 hours. Okay. On other ones, it counts down. On other ones, it counts down. Okay, so uh, we will monitor the yogurt setting um, and hope that it is good. And so, yeah, then after this, there's some other rules. So you'll see me come back. They want you to come back every six to eight hours uh, to do some things with the vents for the 48 hours. So um, I will have some updates over the next 48 hours. And I will also have um, updates and things because really, um, and this is where I think the Holderness family is amazing and they did a hilarious video, uh, but they did taste it right away hot from the Instant Pot. First of all, hot wine, never good. Um, but also in the instructions here, it actually says that ideally you wanna wait up to 30 days. They waited eight and 10 respectively to try it and that it was pretty good after 10 days. Uh, so my goal was actually to wait 30 days um, but to provide the updates as we go. So basically, all throughout our time in Alabama, the wine will be traveling with us and will be coming along. Oh, it went up a minute. And we'll be able to then uh, see how it is, and you'll see me do taste tests. I will taste test it straight out of the hot Instant Pot, um, and then each day progressively as the carbonation dies down. So anyway, um, I'm Shay from No Home Just Rome, and this has been me making Instant Pot wine. And I hope that you'll follow along with the hashtag No Vine, Just Wine at nohomejustrome.com and on Facebook as well as Instagram. So this will keep the heat zone, will keep my yeast happy. Oh, it's on, okay. It's decided to start. Okay. And it's on manual though. Wait, cancel. Heat. Wait. Okay. This is very stressful. Okay. So I just hit the yogurt button, but then when I hit the manual button, it turns off the yogurt function.